One of the things I mentioned in the uh, previous video that the plate voltage of the uh, 12SQ7, which resides right here, was not impacted. I had uh, 56 volts DC on the plate before jumping in the uh, parallel resistors to uh, correct the uh, resistors that drifted high. So you guys saw where R15 was impacting the uh, B plus voltage over to the uh, 90 volt side. And I read 56 volts here before. And you can see I'm still reading around 56 volts. Now the uh, load resistor for the plate resides right here. You can see it. I'll uh, pull up the schematic. R7. 220,000 ohms. You can see it there, red, red, yellow. If that's showing up on camera. Let's look at the voltage drop across that and uh, just do the math to see if we can understand what the uh, current consumption is of that tube and uh, just see why that makes sense. And the uh, voltage drop here is measured across uh, R7 at uh, just a little north of uh, 29 volts DC. After discharging the uh, capacitors, the electrolytics here, you can see our voltage has settled down. Let's flip over here and look at DC resistance now across R7. We're looking for 220,000 ohms, and uh, you can see we're almost spot on in circuit at 225. So uh, that resistor is good. Let's uh, plug the numbers in now to the calculator, do the math, and see what the uh, plate current uh, comes back to be based on uh, the voltage drop that we see in addition to uh, the resistance readings here. The uh, the current consumption for this tube, if you look at the uh, specs here on the radio, when they did their measurements back in the day, 0.2 milliamps of current. And again, I'm showing the uh, math here. So if we take the uh, voltage divided by resistance to calculate the uh, current in amps and convert that to milliamps you can see we're only showing about 0.1284 so being that the uh, load resistor here the plate load resistor was uh, intolerance and up to spec in addition to the uh, low current consumption of the uh, 12S Q7 residing here that resulted in the uh, B plus voltage again uh, being spot on and not impacted. Uh, again, just like the other resistor, should this resistor drift high, we would see the uh, plate voltage uh, low. And uh, that would lead to uh, distortion or a weak reception as well by the receiver. Just taking a quick look here at uh, capacitor C23, I'll speak to it again here in just a moment, but uh, 330 picofarad residing right here. I'm checking that in circuit, so the results here are uh, probably close, but uh, not perfect, 317. So um, I was just looking here to make sure that that uh, capacitor had uh, not opened up at this point. Something else I wanted to mention here about uh, C23, the uh, plate bypass capacitor here that we just checked. It's my understanding it uh, influences the impedance here on the uh, plate itself. And I think that's really acting more of as a filter. So um, any remaining IF frequency that's kind of slipping through the uh, 12SQ7 headed back over to the output tube here is actually uh, pushed to ground so it acts as a, uh, an RF filter and that would clean up the audio uh, back over to the uh, 50 L6 if anybody else out there has a better understanding of that uh, capacitor let me know you'll see it actually omitted on a lot of the designs and it's not even in place and uh, something else I read, too, from our friends at the Antique Radio Forum. In uh, many cases, the uh, capacitor becomes leaky. Thus, uh, intermittently, we're passing 90 volts to ground. And uh, when that arcing occurs, uh, there's static and uh, noise, of course, in the audio. 
and then this would be identifiable by turning the volume down and uh, still hearing the uh, crackling noise. So uh, something to keep in mind on uh, this particular uh, capacitor should you have those particular uh, symptoms. And one thing I didn't mention, again, if this should short, since you can see it's a bypass cap, we would uh, actually be taking the uh, plate voltage to ground, so we would uh, make the uh, set inoperable at that point in time. Moving along here to the uh, volume control around this area, C14 resides right here in this particular receiver. It's nothing more than a uh, coupling capacitor. You can see that it uh, transfers the audio signal back from the uh, volume control here from the uh, wiper position which is uh, the center position you may not be able to see that very well at the uh, angle that we're looking at and of course that signal then uh, goes back to the uh, grid here that I'm showing in the uh, picture in picture so you can see how that uh, connects um, the typical values uh, 0 0.01 microfarad you'll see this design differs. Now again, should this uh, capacitor short out, DC voltage would then uh, flow back across the uh, volume control back to the uh, grid, in our case of the uh, 12SQ7. And uh, that would lead to a, a dead or a severely distorted uh, audio, of course. And if this capacitor here should open up, then the receiver itself would be uh, dead at that point. Now again, I'm going to assume every capacitor in here, less any micas, which would be suspect as well in the oscillator section, are leaky. Let me just look at the DC resistance here on uh, this particular cap. And uh, you can see it's a leaky cap just with a low DC voltage applied. So again, the importance of getting these old uh, capacitors out of here before we even turn on a radio. Um, so this capacitor is not effectively uh, blocking uh, DC as it should, as indicated here, even though the resistance readings are like 7 meg. Let's uh, move down here to the... Uh, grid bias resistor here. The uh, bias resistor here, R6, you can see it's uh, called out on our schematic is 4.7 mega ohms. My guess is it's probably drifted high as well. And of course with a higher resistance value we would see an increase in the uh, bias voltage as well. Which could lead to uh, distortion in the audio side or get to the point where the uh, radio will not actually even operate. So uh, something to keep in mind. We'll uh, check this resistor. Most likely I'll have to pull a lead and uh, check it out of circuit. Just for uh, giggles here, we'll check in circuit and see what we read. And maybe it's not, because you can see when we initially went to it, I was low and it's climbing. So some of that climbing effect, I think it's just some of the other components, possibly some of the uh, capacitors taking a little charge. So uh, maybe that resistor will be okay. But my guess is I would be a suspect of this uh, bias resistor. Again, we're looking for uh, 47 but uh, just to make certain, I will pull a lead here just to make sure that we're uh, within spec. Nestled way back in here, and um, I'll do a picture in picture here from my camera so you guys can see this, but you can follow along on the schematic. We've got uh, C13 here. Again, it's nothing more than an RF bypass cap. And uh, the ranges on it will typically be 150 to uh, 250 picofarads. This looks like it's possibly a mica cap back in here. Could be ceramic.
And again, if this uh, capacitor opens, we would probably hear oscillation. We've been all around the uh, volume control here, and uh, all the uh, checks on it can be done with your uh, digital multimeter, looking at DC resistance in most cases. Again, it acts as a load resistor, in our case for the 12SQ7. And uh, many times you'll hear, you know, sporadic type distortion when uh, we're varying the uh, volume control up and down. And uh, of course that would indicate a problem. Many times you can get in here and uh, clean the uh, volume control and be successful. Other times, you know, the unit uh, may have to be replaced as well. Now this particular volume control has a uh, tap location as well. I think at uh, 50K and uh, you'll see some designs done that way. Philco did that a lot as well. So many times, you know, you can't go back with the uh, tapped volume control. But uh, you could still make the uh, receiver play uh, just almost equally as well uh, without the, uh, the tapped control in place if you can't find one. Let's talk a little bit about uh, R4 and uh, C12 here. Let me see if I can locate those here on the uh, radio. All right, doing some uh, probing around here. We've got uh, R4 is hiding here, and uh, capacitor C12 is uh, hiding out here. And again, both of these together, if you look at the uh, schematic here, they create a, a filter for the uh, AVC. And uh, should capacitor uh, C12 here open up, the a AVC voltage will vary at the uh, audio rate, so that wouldn't be a good situation. Oscillation would also be common if uh, this guy opens up. And of course, if this capacitor completely shorts, um, it would kill the AVC voltage completely and uh, just cause strong stations at best on the uh, receiver to uh, distort. Now if you go back here to uh, R4, if it opens or increases in value, we're going to basically have oscillation, a dead receiver, and overload on local stations. So again, we'll do the same thing. We'll just take our digital multimeter and uh, we'll make certain that uh, this resistor is 3.3 uh, meg and it's spec'd out plus or minus 20%. And of course this cap will need to go. Let's just check across it and see if we can read any uh, DC resistance. So again, I may be influenced by some of the other components nearby, but um, I would consider this a, a leaky cap as well, and uh, one that needs to uh, come out. A nice day for flying. And uh, we come back, we'll jump back up to the uh, IFs itself and uh, look at those a little closer and uh, just keep working our way back over to the uh, RF uh, front end of the uh, receiver. Thanks again for watching and take care.